Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me testing new products. I actually have a few products that I got um, from my BoxyCharm box. I decided this month I'm not going to do a dedicated video and opening to my BoxyCharm box because it did come late again and I know you guys probably aren't as interested when it's a later video. Uh, like I know it's into July now and I got my BoxyCharm at the very end of June pretty much again. So. I'm going to just wait to do um, openings and um, dedicated videos to BoxyCharm for when I'm getting them on time again. One is the new Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. I've heard really cool things about this, that it blurs the pores, makes your skin look super um, smooth, um, and does obviously help set your makeup and make it last longer. So I will be trying that. And then I also got the eye primer the veil eye primer which is new i thought because i'm using those two that i would actually pair them with some other um, face products that i have from hourglass that being said they are in a mini version it is the hourglass veil mineral primer and the hourglass veil translucent setting powder so i'm going to be using those as well it started by applying this all over whoa the face um yeah as i said i haven't used this before so, kind of has a weird smell. It does have a very interesting texture. It's super silky, but it almost feels a little bit greasy. Yeah, it does dry down, so it doesn't feel super greasy on the face, which is nice. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead. I'm actually gonna use my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. Oh, but before I'm gonna use my Smashbox uh, Photo Finish, just in the areas that I have, um, you know, issues with pores. As I said, I'm going to apply my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, and then I'm going to apply my Too Faced um, Peach Perfect Concealer, and then I will go ahead and try out the Veil Setting Powder. The powder, um, I definitely don't know how I feel about it. I feel like my skin looks a little bit dry right now, and I know that that foundation doesn't get dry on me. Um, I do like that foundation. So, um, I also wouldn't recommend baking with it. I feel like my under eyes are definitely dry looking. Um, and I know that it didn't necessarily say it was for baking, but I do like to see, you know, um, how different powders work when I'm testing them. Um, so yeah, that, that powder I would recommend just like a light dusting on the face. And if you have really dry skin, I don't know if I'd recommend it because I feel like it really kind of dried down, dried my foundation a little bit. Okay, so we're going to move on to eyes. I do have the Hourglass Primer. So this is the Hourglass, um, it's the Veil Eye Primer cute little squeeze the tube and it is supposed to amplify your eyeshadow color and its staying power with a silky blendable primer it's long wearing lightweight formula creates an even canvas for eyeshadow improves its performance making its color more vibrant while reducing fading creasing with vitamins e and c it keeps the skin moisturized and reduces the look of age spots and sun damage intended for all skin types okay so it has a tint to it for sure it feels very creamy so it's, it's going on so far very similar to the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Like that's like the OG eyeshadow primer, but this is very similar. So far so good. It feels a little bit tacky still, but not like overly tacky um, or like overly sticky. So I think um, I'm just gonna have to see how everything sits on it and how everything um, stays like and, and wears. So we will, uh, I'll update you on that. I am gonna do a wear test on this. Next thing I'm gonna be doing is eyeshadow and I have the new, um, new-ish palette from Maybelline. It is the Nude, uh, Nudes of New York. I, I think if this has been in stores for a few months now, but I finally picked it up because I've heard really great things about it. Um, and yeah, so I've actually swatched all the shades because I couldn't help myself. And they actually look so incredible for a drugstore eyeshadow palette. I mean, drugstore has really upped its game in the last, like, 
you know, while. I feel like drugstore makeup really has um, improved in quality and is very comparable to some high-end makeup. So I'm gonna just go ahead and play around with this palette and we're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna take a Morphe R37 and I'm gonna take a little bit of this Soloist. It's that really like creamy shade here. Um, and I'm gonna dust that all over the eye just to kind of create a base. Um, so I am going to focus it in the crease. I'm pale, remember, so on anybody who's a bit darker skin toned, this may not show up as much as on me. I just kind of take the excess and blend it all over the eye. Let's do burgundy because I just think it's so pretty. Um, so then I'm going to go into Explorer, and that's that like kind of mauve brown shade. I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm just going to focus it more on the outer crease. Like, wow, these are blending really incredibly. Um, they do kick up uh, a bit of product. Um, just top off your excess or do your eyes first, but nothing crazy. Like, they're pretty pigmented. For the price, man, these shades are, are really nice. The color selection's good. I think it, it's really nice. I'm taking a bit of this Creator, which is a bit lighter, and I'm just going to lightly kind of use that shade to blend that edge and, and further, like, soften it. Now I'm going to take, hmm, like, that was... Wow, incredible. Look at that Globetrotter, and then this is Voyager. These feel very like silky almost. Yeah, those two are really nice. Hmm, which one do I want to go with? Let's do Globetrotter, because that was really impressive. I'm going to take a smaller brush where I can kind of pack it on. I'm going to take my JH50, tap off the excess. This one does kick up quite a bit of product, so I'm really going to tap off the excess. And I'm going to kind of pack that, the outer half of the lid and into the crease. Like look at the richness of that, that's incredible. And I'm going to just take this brush and kind of blend, I'm like kind of just pulling the color into the lid to kind of soften that and blend it in. Okay, so now I'm gonna just kind of little circles with this brush, just really tiny little circles along that edge, and hopefully we will get that nice blended effect. And then I'm just gonna kind of pull it into the crease a little bit more. I haven't even added any onto my brush. I'm gonna take a little bit more on my R37, that creator, just a touch more and one last time blend out that edge blend 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 i'm going to take the color fighter and i'm going to place it all over um, the inner part of the lid just wanted to go with this really almost like orangey reddish like really warm metallic and I'm liking it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Inspire right here and I'm going to pop that in the center. I'm gonna kind of just pull, mix them together. Kind of go over the line in between and just kind of blend that out of it. Okay, so I'm gonna just brighten this inner corner. I'm going to take my Luxie Mini Flat Angled and take some of this Originator and brighten this inner corner. Oh wow. Bring it down onto the lash line a bit too. I had actually quite a bit of fallout. So that's one um, negative to this palette. But as I said, um, you know, maybe I could have been even just a little bit more diligent with having my excess. I think it was also from the metallics because I used my finger. Um, either way, it wasn't really anything 
you know, too bad I was able to wipe it away. Plus you could do your eyes first if that's like a concern of yours because for, you know, a drugstore palette, this is pretty impressive. The excess on the brow bone here. And that's just so pretty. So I think I'm done with my eyeshadow. I'm really impressed with this palette so far. We'll see how long it lasts. Is there any fading? Is there any creasing? Is there any, um, you know, issues in that sense? Um, and that will also be kind of a test for the primer too. So it'll be a mixture of those two. Um, so this is um, an, an eyeliner and a lash adhesive all at once. Um, so it, it, it says lash adhesive when wet, eyeliner when dry. This unique marbled formula will revolutionize the way you think about lashes and liner, delivering impact and making lash application more effortless than ever before. No need to fuss with magnetic lashes as the Lash & Go eyeliner does not require any magnets and can be used with any lash style. Um, if you can do liner, you can do lashes. It removes the barrier of entry for false lash application. Basically how it's gonna work is you're gonna, you know, apply this as you would um, a liquid liner. It has that kind of um, brush tip. Actually, I think it's a felt tip. It's very precise from what I can see. Um, and then while it is still wet, you're going to apply your lashes on top and that is going to stick to them and you don't have to apply your liner, then apply the glue to the lash, make sure it's you know, attached, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a, a lot easier and it's gonna make life a lot easier for not only um, beginners, but even people that know what they're doing, it's just one less step, which is really nice. First I'm gonna do mascara and this is actually a new product as well. So I'm gonna be trying out the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes. Um, I typically would try out this, mas like any mascara that I'm testing, I typically would try it out on its own just to see how it holds curl. But I really wanted to try this and the velour lash thing, so I'm obviously going to try uh, both of these products um, again. Um, you know, I'll try this mascara again on its own, but I just want to see what it looks like going on. So the Huda Beauty Legit um, Lash is two brushes, two formulas, one legit mascara. A long-lasting matte black dual-ended mascara that delivers major volume, dramatic curl, and insane length without weighing down your lashes. It features two custom brushes that uh, and formulas. So the, not only are the brushes separate, but the formulas are separate. They're designed to give you the perfect lashes. Whether you use both sides or together or separate, this mascara allows you to customize your look according to your mood. And the volume, its formula features short volumizing fibers that fit between the lashes to create fuller voluminous lash effect. It's a, uh, their featheriness prevents the lash from getting weighed down and stiff. Then the curl and length side has a formula that includes gripping waxes and five millimeter lengthening fibers for an immediate elongated effect. The innovative custom brush lengthens um, even your tiniest lashes for it to create a wispy, fluttery effect. So that's the brush for the volume side. Now, I would typically do my eyeliner, then my mascara, then my false lashes, but I'm kind of having to do it a little bit differently because I do put mascara on whether um, or not I'm putting lashes on. And that's because I feel like it blends and you don't see the difference. And then I don't have to apply mascara onto the actual lashes and then that way they're easier to reuse. Um, so I'll just have to put the eyeliner on after the mascara dries. Okay, so that is what it looks like with one coat of the volume side. So now we're going to apply the curl and length side. Um, I don't even need false lashes. I mean, I'm still gonna put them on to test this velour lash adhesive and eyeliner, but wow, that's an impressive mascara. I really, 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 really like that. I feel like it definitely added volume. It definitely added curl. It definitely added length. And it doesn't look clumpy. It doesn't look, um, wow. I, I mean, I obviously have to see how the curl lasts. Does it flake or anything like that? But I'm extremely impressed with this so far. 
while that's drying, just because I don't want um, to make a mess while I'm putting on my eyeliner, I'm gonna let that dry for a couple minutes. And while that's drying, I'm going to reach into my BoxyCharm box and pull out my Laura Geller Multitasking Eye Lip and Cheek Palette. I got this, as I said, in my BoxyCharm box. It is a regular um, $24, and it's a cream to power face palette that includes two finishes, Demi Matte and Subtle Shimmer. So it's a blush, a bronzer, and a highlight. It says cream to powder, and I typically find those formulas work decent over top of powder, so we will see. looks very pigmented. It's blending out really nicely. It's a pretty warm toned, a warm toned bronzer to use as contour, but that's okay. I like it actually. I feel like it matches my eye look really nicely because that my eye looks pretty warm. If you're gonna use it just as bronzer and you're not going for that really defined you know, sculpted look, I'd recommend being pretty light-handed with it because it's pretty pigmented. Okay, and I'm actually not going to use the blush because another product that is new to me and being tested today is the Fenty Cream Blush. I got it in Coral, or sorry, Cool Berry. It's the Cheeks Out Cream Blush. I got the cream bronzer and I had to try the cream blush. The cream blush, blush by Fenty is a lot smaller than the bronzer. Now that being said, I don't know if it's because cream blush, I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't be the same size. But I do like the packaging. It's a little bit different than the bronzer. It's white, so I do really like the packaging as I do pretty much everything by Fenty. I got it in Cool Berry, which is a soft mauve with a little bit of shimmer easy to use, impossible to overdo, and in a lineup of shades designed to enhance every complexion. So it's a light as air, non-greasy cream blush that instantly melts into the skin, effortless wash of color. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna actually just use um, the side of my beauty blender that I have yet to place any product on. It's a cooler tone, so it, I'm gonna be, a, whoa, pigmented. Okay, well, I'm going to apply the excess on this side. And again, it's cream blush, but I don't know. These, these cream products that I'm using today have taken a chance over top of this powder. And I'm, I think it's not a mistake because that looks really nice. It's drying down on top of that powder nicely. It's not patchy. Um, so again, these are able to be used um, you know, under or on top of powder. They're pretty pigmented, so I think if you were to use them on under powder, you would still see it through, which is a good thing. Now I'm just gonna take my powder brush. I don't have any on, but again, I'm gonna kind of set that and it'll tone it down a little bit. Now I'm pretty blushed up, but I'm cool with that. So if you don't, if you like a really subtle blush, I recommend being light-handed with this as well. So far so good though, I'm really impressed with this palette here and the cream blush by Fenty. We'll see how they wear. Now I'm gonna go in with this highlight. I might actually just use my finger. Um, it's from the Laura Geller. It is a cream to powder highlight, but because that bronzer went on so nicely, I wanna see how this cream highlight does. Oh yeah, I like that. I'm gonna just add a tiny bit uh, from my Tardis Pro Palette Stunner because I've been like obsessed with that. See, just a little extra, a little extra something something. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this Galore Eyeliner and Lash Adhesive and um, I'm also gonna pop on my lashes. Okay, so I have a couple things to say. This is really hard to apply once you already have mascara on because it is really tough not to get it in your lashes. And then not only 
is it an eyeliner? It's an adhesive, so it's sticky. It's gonna stick your lashes together. So I recommend definitely doing this before mascara. It would have been a million times easier, a million times less messy. Um, I really think that this formula is nice. It dried down to a pretty matte. I think it is almost like a satin matte. Um, I think that this is gonna be super, super, it is pretty revolutionary, and I think it's a little bit of a learning curve. Um, it's pretty easy to pick up on like how to use it, but I think because like I'm definitely going to have to either um, apply mascara after or just not apply mascara. Um, I probably would just apply mascara after um, and then just have to not be so lazy and clean my lashes really well after. Like my lashes, that mascara, I'm going to have to try, try again because I now have not a lot of lash glue in it, but like there's lash glue in my lashes now. so. Anyways, um, I'm really impressed with, like, they stuck on really well. I had no issues with that. Make sure that the, um, I had to just add a little bit afterwards to this eye um, on the inside. And so this eye doesn't look maybe quite as good because I kind of needed to just do it one time and then I picked up on how to, how to do it. Um, so this eye um, was pretty simple other than getting it in my lashes. Would I use it as just an eyeliner? No, because it's a little bit of like a more wet and messy formula and like sticky. But am I going to use it again for lashes? 100% because I think it's super cool idea. Um, it It's definitely one last step. And I think that it's really, you know, it's really good. Okay, we have the Hourglass Soft Focus Setting Spray. This is new to Hourglass. It says, um, so it's the Veil line, like um, line, and it's a soft focus setting spray. I like the packaging, very sleek, um, with most of Hourglass. Um, that's typical. So it says, see your skin through a soft focus lens that lasts all day long. Lightweight spray sets makeup while blurring imperfections. Undetectable on the skin, ultra fine and hydrating mist creates a smooth, even and naturally radiant appearance. So it's not mattifying, it's more of a radiant setting spray. It's water resistant properties enhance foundation for maximum staying power, setting it in place for up to 24 hours. So we're test the ladies and gentlemen. Holy smokes, it's like ultra fine mist. I feel like it definitely made me look a little bit more radiant, which is okay with me lately. It's, I never used to be that way, but I feel like it looks it looks nice so far. Like, do you see that mist? It's super fine, I like that. All right, we'll see how it makes my makeup wear um, last, and once I get upstairs in different lighting, I'm gonna definitely update you guys on how I think this blurring effect works. Totally forgot to do my lips, and this is another product that I wanted to test today. I got it in my BoxyCharm box. It is by um, KAB Cosmetics. It's a lip duo, so it comes with a lip liner and a lip gloss, and it is regular $40. So I got it in the shade Charming. So it is this like kind of more reddish tone. So I really like that color and I like the lip liner. Like it's it, it's a nice creamy lip liner, but it's not like, it doesn't move around a lot. This is the gloss and it's in the same color. Beautiful packaging, I really like that. And it's like a nice chunky gloss. I don't know, I kind of like it. And it looks very pigmented, let's see. Holy smokes, that is cool, I like that. I love how pigmented it is. really impressed with that gloss. I just had to make sure it wasn't on my teeth. It was super pigmented. It um, is a beautiful like shine to it, not too crazy. I feel like it just makes my lips look more juicy and I love the color. So overall, I'm really impressed so far with pretty much everything. Okay, so I resulted in throwing my hair up in a pony because it's really starting to bother me today. I am going to do a wear test, so I'm going to update you guys on how all of this wears and what I think at the end of the day of all of these products. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, so it is the end of the day. It's been 
at the very least seven hours since I put my makeup on. I know it's not the longest for a test, but um, I finished my video a bit late. So um, I'm really impressed with my makeup today. I do feel like I said in this area, like I said before, is not doing great. I think the powder isn't my favorite, to be honest with you. Um, I think that I would try it one more time as just like a light dusting and see how I feel before I make a final decision about the powder. The primer, I think, did a good job. Um, I'm happy with that. Really loved the um, primer like eye primer I mean, sorry, because my eyeshadow has not budged at all and that also says great things about the eyeshadow itself. Um, I'm really impressed with this palette, like really impressed. Um, for a drugstore, like by Maybelline palette, really impressed. The mascara was a total hit and I will be using this like all the time now, I'm, I'm super excited. I think the idea of this velour eyeliner is, and adhesive is incredible it's revolutionary it's going to be a game changer um, but i do have to say that i would like to see how it works before doing my mascara because i definitely made a mess of my lashes so i would i would recommend again doing mascara after you've put your false lashes on with this but really really cool they haven't budged at all they're not going anywhere um i haven't had to fix them at all so really impressed by that the lip uh, kit that I got in my BoxyCharm box by KAB um, Cosmetics. Um, I actually really, really liked the color. I liked the pigmentation of both products. And I felt like they had a decent wear time. I mean, for... I can actually still see it. It almost stained my lips. I probably wouldn't go quite as far outside of my lips if I'm not going to be touching it up just because I can see that like line on my skin. And I really, really, really liked the Laura Geller um, Multitasking Eye Lip and Cheek Palette. I did not use the blush, so I will use that. Um, but I used these two and I was impressed with both of them and they were over powder. I liked the pigmentation, it blended well. And then the Fenty Cream Blush, really impressed. It's still kicking, still pigmented. Really, really like it. Um, and I loved the color too. So I really like that. We'll be using that again as well. The, um, Hourglass setting spray. I really, really liked this. I do think that it does um, set the makeup down really nicely. It kind of helps illuminate and make your skin look a little bit more radiant if it does look dry because I felt like my skin looked less dry after I sprayed it, which, um, you know, certain setting sprays do help that um, in my own collection already. So it, it did the job for that. Um, I didn't notice like a drastic change in blurring and that like poor pour diffusing effect but I'm going to try this again with other combinations and and continue to try it just to see I want to play around with it um, thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed and I found some new really really good products some new favorites actually so um, yeah thank you so much for watching guys I hope you have a wonderful day don't forget to subscribe to my channel ring the bell like the video if you enjoyed and stay tuned for my next video see you guys